Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event today. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Sarah. I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items for you. This is a webinar, so your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time throughout the presentations today. Um, I do do encourage that if you have a question for a particular institution that you list that in the Q&A question so that way they can answer that a little bit faster for you. This is just one of many different sessionings, uh, sessions happening today so be sure to go and check out the, the schedule on the website for more and this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash PCA CAC and now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from Lycoming College. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Alicia Wine and I am from like Cumming College located in North Central Pennsylvania in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Um, we just start off with some quick highlights about like Cumming College. Uh, our student body is 1200, we're a small liberal arts college. Uh, our student to faculty ratio is 12 to one. Um, we have 19 varsity sports with the newest edition of baseball and women's field hockey. And we have eight, over 80 uh, student-led clubs and organizations. Um, you'll notice on the slide that we have uh, 43 majors and 66 minors. Uh, actually, we've grown our majors and we're up to 45 with the newest edition of 3D animation. Uh, something that's nice about our majors and minors, being a small liberal arts college is the interdisciplinary nature of our majors and minors and the ability to really mold a program into what you want to do and how that's going to lead you to your career. Uh, some of our most popular programs are psychology, criminal justice, biology, and business administration. Uh, some of our unique new programs that are really growing uh, are astrophysics, biochemistry, neuroscience, uh, 3D animation, entrepreneurship, energy studies, in Latin American archaeology. Uh, the really neat thing about our archaeology program at Lake Cumming College is that every student in the archaeology major is required to do one dig before graduation. And we have dig sites in Cyprus, Guatemala, and Israel. Um, LICO is one of the 50th oldest uh, institutions in the nation. And uh, on the flip side of that, it's important that we're keeping our uh, facilities in a modern world. Um, in the top center photo, you'll see our newest building on campus, which is the Craft Gateway Center. Uh, we have a three foot or a three story rock wall, rock climbing wall in that building, and it's home to admissions in the alumni and advancement offices. 95% uh, of the class of 2020 were employed or in a graduate program within six to 12 months, and that goes to one of our uh, ratings of being one of the top institutions for return on investment. So you're going to come to LICO and um, get your money's worth. Uh, like I said earlier, our 12 to 1 student to faculty ratio ensures that uh, you're being able to build those relationships with faculty members. And that's important when it comes to finding those internships and careers after graduation. 100% of our students at LICO receive scholarships in financial aid. Um, our merit-based scholarships run from $18,000 to $32,000 a year, renewable all four years. 37% uh, of our students at Light Cumming are domestic students of color or international students. Uh, one of the big highlights that I would like you to take away tonight from Light Cumming College is our Center for Enhanced Academic Experiences. Uh, we have cluster of uh, Career advising model based on clusters. So we have four career advisors, one in the art, for the arts and humanities majors, one for business, which includes accounting, economics, business administration, and corporate communication, one for our STEM fields, and one for social sciences. Uh, students uh, start, can start with their career advisor during freshman orientation. So you're coming in, getting that career advising, um, which is really nice. 
students that like come in college do not have to declare their major until the second semester of their um, sophomore year, which is nice. It gives you time to come fill out a couple of different areas if you want to. Um, but also in that same boat, it gives you an opportunity, uh, easy opportunity to be able to double major if you are sure of what you want to do. 100% of our students have to participate in one, at least one enhanced academic experience before graduation that can include double majoring, uh, studying abroad, uh, an internship, research with a faculty me member, and there's many other ways that you can uh, complete that goal. Another exciting thing I mentioned our rock wall um, would be our outdoor leadership and education office. So they go on about 100 trips a year. And just this, I just looked at our calendar. We have 10 events planned for this upcoming month. Everything from whitewater rafting to kayaking, backpacking, ski, downhill skiing, uh, you name it. We got it for the outdoors. Uh, we're you know situated right on the Susquehanna River, which also makes it really nice, but we've traveled to many different states, including Virginia, West Virginia, and we just did a backpacking and hiking trip in the Adirondack Mountain. Um, we also have a bicycle shop on campus, which is kind of unique. Uh, you can rent out bikes, or also if you have a bike on campus and need a repair, you can take it to the bike uh, repair shop on campus, and they'll pay for the parts to fix the bike, and they'll teach you actually how to repair the bike. Um, just a uh, Couple other things, like I said, Alec, uh, if you're not sure what you want to major in, an, an awesome opportunity would be to uh, take a picture of the QR code located at kind of in the bottom center of the slide. Um, you'll be able to go on that and kind of select any areas that you're interested at like coming, whether it be extracurricular activity, major, minor, and you'll be able to create your own view book that's pertinent to you. I'll be adding my contact information in the chat um, if you have any questions following the event. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Hood College. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Danny Casillo. I'm uh, a Hood College graduate. I actually graduated in 2020, so not too long ago. Uh, I major in business administration and concentration in marketing, a double major in Spanish. And a cool fact about me is I studied abroad in Barcelona when I was at Hood. Um, today I'll be sharing with you guys a little bit about where Hood College is and what Hood College has to offer. I'll start up by telling you guys where Hood College is. Hood College is in uh, Frederick, Maryland, about an hour away from Fred, uh, from Washington, D.C., and an hour away from Baltimore. So it's in a great location, 20 minutes away from PA, 20 minutes away from Virginia and West Virginia. So when it comes to internships, having D.C. nearby and Baltimore, um, not to mention that Frederick, it is the fifth fastest, fastest growing city in Maryland. So there's a lot of opportunities there. Here's a few shots of our campus. Uh, beautiful campus in the winter. It's my favorite time on campus with snowstorms. You know, get a few days off from school and getting to go out to the quad and, you know, getting snowball fights and all that good stuff I heard. Uh, a little bit about our community. We have about 1,200 undergraduate students, very diverse from 30 different states and 14 different countries. Our student and faculty ratio is 11 to 1, so you won't be just one more, one more number at Hood College. You will be recognized. People are going to know what you do, whether you play sports, whether you're involved in uh, extracurricular activities like clubs and organizations. People are going to know that. The professors will know your name. Uh, you won't sit in a big lecture hall where uh, people don't know whether you're in there or not. Average class size 15 students per, per classroom. I can attest to this. And as you go, um, go deeper into your major, you get to thinner classes. I remember my smallest class being 10 students. We did uh, not the traditional style of class. It was a round table. We sat and chat with a professor and learned that way. I think that was pretty neat to, to switch it up, you know, from sitting in front of, of an instructor all for four years to have something where you're sitting around the table was, was nice. Uh, here's an overview of Hood College. It's a 50 acre campus. It's divided into thirds. The bottom section that I'm pointing at is all academic halls. The middle section has the quad and the residence halls. We have six residence halls, uh, including a brand new one that is actually not pictured. It's so new that we just named it actually two weeks ago to Blazer Hall. It has apartment style living, suite style, and uh, semi-suite. You get your own bathroom, your own shower. A lot of uh, our students 
pick four friends and get to live there. It's a little bit different from all the traditional side dorms. Uh, and then the last section of campus in the back is athletics. We have um, 22 varsity sports and uh, we have a gym back there that you can use whether you play sports or not. And then surrounding the picture, you can see our community very neat. Our, our neighbors come to our community a lot. Their, their kids uh, take their first steps there. Um, they go out on runs, bikes, and just two blocks away from Hunt College, we have another big park, the biggest park in Frederick County, actually. And then about a mile down, we have downtown Frederick. These pictures at the bottom are downtown Frederick. There's a lot to do. That's something that I always tell students when they visit campuses to make sure they go downtown and check out what else the school has to offer. You, you spend four years on the campus. We have a lot to do on campus, but there's always sometimes on a Saturday where you want to do something, go out to dinner when your family comes visit you. So that is very important for you guys. We have over 34 majors, including uh, sustainability, which one of the most recent majors that we added. Our, our most popular majors being nursing, having a, we have a fully equipped nursing wing uh, and having a hospital next door. It's very popular for us. Business administration, we have a school of business, uh, econ. Um, education is also very popular and criminal justice. We have over 50 clubs and organizations having uh, 500 events on campus that leads to two events, two and a half events uh, a day. So whether it's a sporting event, a club or organization having uh, a bingo night, a, uh, a homecoming dance, the uh, family weekend. Blazer Bingo is my favorite event on campus. They give prices like AirPods TV, so super fun. Here's a few pictures of our events on campus. And there's always room for you guys to start your own uh, clubs and organization. We encourage that at Hood College. We have 22 varsity sports, as I mentioned. We recently added men's volleyball and we compete in the NCAA Division III Mid-Atlantic Conference against other schools like Lycoming, actually. Um, we actually, our, our, our men's soccer team played live coming not too long ago. So uh, we compete, uh, we drive a lot to PA to play those schools within our conference. But there's always a spot for you on campus. And there's uh, club teams like Equestrian as well. So for you guys next, we started uh, taking applications starting August 1st. So if you're a senior, you, you're uh, more than ready to start. We will be ready to read your application. We have rolling admissions. We are test optional and we do not have an application fee. You can find us in the Common App as well. So I encourage you guys to always uh, add us to that. And then your next step for us would be to schedule a visit with us and um, get in contact with the admissions counselor. So if you go to our website, you can find your admissions counselor is, and they'll be in touch with you. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much. Next up, we have Wittenberg University. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Linda Beals, and I am a counselor at Wittenberg. Um, I graduated many more years ago than Danny, so I'm not even going to I'm not even going to say. But uh, I'd like to welcome you today. Hope your Sunday is going well. We'd like to tell you ten things you need to know about Wit. Um, Wittenberg is located in Springfield, Ohio, um, which is midway between Columbus and Dayton, Ohio. Um, our students um, were, were very student focused. Um, with Connections curriculum is kind of an exploratory uh, walk through our general education requirements. Um, our top five majors, biology, business, education, psych, and nursing, faculty student ratio, 13 to one. And our faculty um, are very ac accessible to students and so, they teach all their classes, there are no teaching assistants, and um, they hold office hours and they're really in their office for you. Um, our athletic teams, we have 25. Um, we have women's water polo and men's volleyball. Those are the latest that have been added, but um, very successful teams in football, women's volleyball, men's basketball, and other sports this fall are coming on strong. Um, this is our indoor facility um, for uh, brand new. Um, it's called the Steamer Center, and it is a full 300 meter track and a full football field, 
all spark sports participate in there. Plus we do use it for club intramurals um, and also um, events. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we make a difference in the Springfield community, about 50,000 hours of community service our students are giving per year. So our student body at about 1,600, um, it is a mandatory requirement to graduate. Um, we have a, a director of community service and a department um, held in our Hagen Center for Civic and Urban Engagement. Um, the 30 hours of service can start your sophomore year, uh, must do it in order to get that diploma when you cross the stage. And um, like it says, 45 community partners, and that is who our director helps align you with. Of course, study abroad is popular. We have several programs that are Wittenberg only, Wittenberg and Wittenberg, Germany, Costa Rica, Cape Town, South Africa. We also do study away in Lesotho, Africa, which is a one month summer program, um, which is community service based and um, working with uh, um, young children in orphanages. Um, WIT in Washington, DC is our Lutheran uh, sister school um, semester in DC, allowing our students to um, meet their internship requirement and um, also take class and explore DC. It's for all majors, not just political science. We have Bahamas uh, field study, as well as our Duke Marine Lab semester. Uh, marine biology is a big um, interest, believe it or not, in the middle of Ohio, who would think that? But with those two programs and being able to study at the Duke Marine Lab for a semester is, is an amazing opportunity. Um, arts, the fine arts are also very strong at Wittenberg. So art, music, theater, uh, you can major, minor, or just be involved. Uh, many students are majoring in something else, but they really want to be involved in, um, in a theater production, and so they have the ability to do that. It is not just for majors. Um, we have a campus full of student leaders, a lot of student activities and organizations. About 30% of our students will uh, be affiliated with a fraternity or sorority. 40% are participating in varsity athletics. And then we have the 100 plus clubs that every other school has. Um, and those clubs vary. Um, they change. If a student finds a club, I will say several years ago, a students wanted to start a fishing club. So they started a fishing club. It's called Fischenberg. Um, we have the Nitwits, some students who like to knit wanted to start a club. So lots of um, entertaining clubs and organizations. And those are our top five activities that students really enjoy on campus. We are a four paws dog site. So every semester we have 12 dogs being socialized to work with um, autistic and um, diabetic um, kids. Big activities on campus, of course, um, in our uh, living community. Um, mandatory to live on campus for the first two, two years, unless you're a commuter student. And those um, residence halls, uh, we have seven of them. Then you'd be able to move into what we classify as the Wittenburbs. Those are off-campus houses as well as um, apartments. We have themed living communities in um, tower halls, so 10 floors of different themed living communities, and of course, a, a central dining hall for our students. Um, most of our students are obviously placed in a job close to graduation. Um, we have an excellent alumni network. Internships are offered. Every student has to have one to graduate. Here's our profile of our students, three, four. Um, we are test optional. We have been since 2007, so it is not a COVID-based thing. Um, of course, scholarships we have ranging from 17 to $30,000. Full tuition room board and fees at Wittenberg is 53,000. Use our net price calculator if you'd like to have the ability to get a gauge on where you'd fall as far as receiving aid. Next steps, apply. Uh, we are open. We have an uh, early action deadline on December 1, and we have some incentives along the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up is Dickinson College.
Hi, everyone. My name is Rebecca Chernia. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Dickinson. Um, my position is a little bit unique in that I am a full-time admissions employee, but I am regionally based down in Washington, D.C. Uh, so I work with students in this area that are looking at the school. So I'm really excited to be chatting with you all today. Uh, so Dickinson College is a small liberal arts college located in central Pennsylvania. Um, so we are in Carlisle, which is about 30 minutes south of Harrisburg. Um, from where I am in DC, um, it's an easy two hour drive for me to get up to campus. Uh, the college itself is located right in the heart of historic downtown Carlisle. Um, the way I always describe Carlisle, for those of you that haven't been there, um, it's a super dated reference, but I think Carlisle looks an awful lot like Stars Hollow from the show Gilmore Girls. So if you get that reference, I appreciate you greatly. Um, but this works really well for our students, and not only do you have this beautiful, defined, collegiate-feeling campus, but you have access to all the resources and opportunities in the town as well. Um, we are quite well known for our food, so we have about 30 different locally owned restaurants within the area um, covering all different types of food. So no matter what you're in the mood for, you will find it in town. Uh, Dickinson is an incredibly old school. We were actually the first college chartered in the newly created United States. Uh, we were formed six days after the signing of the Treaty of Paris. Um, and that is not a coincidence. That actually was by design. So our founding fathers knew that we needed a new type of higher education to educate new leaders for this new country. Um, so very lofty goal, but I think they found the right person in our founder, Dr. Benjamin Rush. Um, he was a very progressive person for his time and a lot of the things he believed about education, uh, we very much hold on to today. So I always like to share Dickinson's four pillars. Um, the four pillars um, really set the foundation for our education experience. So for us, no matter what a student studies, no matter what they wanna do in life after graduation, we want them to walk away being sustainable, future focused, global and engaged. Um, I did mention that we are a small liberal arts college. So when it comes to academics, our programs are very much in the liberal arts college vein. Uh, we have about 2,300 students studying 46 different majors. Um, and we cover a wide variety of fields. So in terms of raw numbers, I would say international business and management um, has the largest number of graduating seniors every year. Um, but we are also quite well known for our history, our English, political science, law and policy programs. But at the same time, about a third of our students are science majors. So there really is no one pathway at Dickinson. Um, my, uh, the, the new major that we have this year, which I am personally very excited about, um, is data analytics. Um, so this is a very unique program for a liberal arts college to have, but we actually created it at the recommendation of our alumni, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we've already received some really great interest in this program from both um, current students and prospective students as well. Um, our 2,300 students come from almost all 50 states. If you know someone from the Dakotas, please send them our way. Um, and then we have representation from about 50 different countries around the world. So we truly are a global school. Um, of the four pillars, I usually would spend a whole presentation talking about them, but I'm just going to pick one, um, and that is global. Um, so global means a few different things to us. Not only do you see it in our student body, but you see it in the diversity of courses that we offer. You see it in our foreign language requirements. So we do expect all students, no matter what they're studying, to achieve at least the intermediate level of a secondary language. And we do have 13 languages to choose from, so there really is something for everybody. And then, of course, when we talk about global, people always think study abroad, which is really big for us as well. So about 65% of our students study abroad, and we also have excellent percentages of science majors, student athletes, and first-generation students studying abroad as well. And historically, those are very underrepresented populations. So I think that's a really true testament um, to how accessible and affordable Dickinson makes studying abroad. Um, we run 18 of our own programs all around the world, but we want our students to have more than 18 choices. Uh, so we're partnered with different organizations, which in total will provide about 50 different study abroad experiences for our students. Um, and then right here on sustainability, you can see um, we actually did achieve about a decades long goal of becoming carbon neutral last year. So yes, something positive did happen in 2020. Um, lots of different things I would say went towards us becoming carbon neutral, but the one that I always like to share is we actually do run our own farm. Um, it is a USDA certified organic, very high yielding farm. 
farm. Um, and a lot of that food that we produce on the farm does end up back into the dining hall. So when you think about eating local or farm to table, it's about as farm to table as it can get. Um, and there's some really great volunteer opportunities for students as well on the farm. So even if you're not interested in a career in agriculture, um, it's a really cool way to learn about food systems and where our food comes from. Uh, just to really quickly touch a little bit on admissions and financial aid, we do have a very holistic admissions process. The only way to apply to us is through the Common App, and we will be looking at all elements of your application. A big thing for us that came out last year, we're holding true to it this year, is that we are test blind or test free for admission. So that means we're not looking at standardized test scores for any students for any reason, not for admissions, not for merit scholarships. So I really hope, you know, that might ease some of the stress of applying to college. Uh, when it comes to financial aid, we do award merit scholarships. They range from 15,000 to 30,000 in academic year, and students are automatically considered for those. Our highest merit scholarship is the presidential at 35, and there is a separate application for that. Um, it is just one short essay question with a deadline that's the same as our regular admission deadline, January 15th. And then we are able to meet 100% of demonstrated student need. Um, so if you want to be considered for need-based aid, you just submit the appropriate financial aid documents. So that was my very quick overview. Those six minutes go fast. Um, so I look forward to answering any of your questions in the Q&A box. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Gettysburg College. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Maddie Wonder. I am a Gettysburg College alum of the class of 2017 and have been working there pretty much ever since. Um, so I'm a senior assistant director of admission and your uh, regional counselor. So Gettysburg College is a highly selective national college of the liberal arts and sciences with about 2,600 students. Um, we are located in the world famous historical town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So you do have access to major metropolitan areas such as Washington DC and Baltimore, Maryland. And our students do come from nearly 40 states and 40 countries, um, and about 25% now identify themselves as domestic students of color, um, which is an awesome diversity that we pride ourselves on here at Gettysburg. We are a fully residential college, so you're guaranteed on campus living all four years. Um, and the students get involved right away by joining one or more of our 120 student run clubs and organizations, always adding new ones. It's easy to create your own should we not have that Quidditch team or squash team you're looking for. Now, we, we do offer the housing all four years and campus food. So we've been ranked number nine this year in the Princeton Review for Campus Food, which is super important in college. Our students are active and friendly. Um, and the picture in the bottom right of this slide here is one of our many traditions. Um, so it is the first year walk, um, which students have been doing since 1863 when they walked the one mile from campus up to the National Cemetery to hear actually President Lincoln deliver the Gettysburg Address. Academically, Gettysburg has a rigorous interdisciplinary curriculum in the liberal arts and sciences. We have almost 70 majors, minors, and academic programs, including a new business major, an economics major, uh, with an economics experimental lab and Bloomberg Terminal. We offer strong sciences with a focus on collaborative research with faculty members, um, including a cross-disciplinary science institute that happens in the summer if you wanna stay on campus, work under the mentorship of a faculty member um, and do research while getting paid as well. We are one of about only 15 colleges and universities still with an active honor code on campus, all student run and enforced. Um, and we give you two years to select a major. Um, and about 20% of our students last year actually completed their degrees with two majors or a double major as we call it. Nearly 60% of our students will spend at least one semester studying abroad in one of the over 100 affiliated programs all around the world. 
And our high impact programs like the Eisenhower Institute, the Center for Public Service, the Garthwaite Leadership Center, and the Sunderman Conservatory of Music allow you to really gain those leadership and soft skills beyond the classroom experience at Gettysburg as well. In fact, our Eisenhower Institute, pictured here with a group of students in front of the White House, um, just got a new director, uh, Tracy Pott. Um, I would recommend Googling her, and she'll be based in our Washington, D.C. Eisenhower Institute office. Um, those programs um, all range in the legacy of President Dwight D. Eisenhower on leadership, public policy, economics, foreign policy, and more. Um, as it says here, 98% of the class of 2020 were either en enrolled in graduate school or employed one year after uh, graduating. 96% of recent graduates who applied were accepted and enrolled full-time in a graduate school program a year later. And nearly 80% of our students complete at least one internship during their four years. So we have a super active alumni network like myself, over 30,000, um, always proud to be a Gettysburgian, reaching out uh, for opportunities for our current students as well. Here's your information, highlight, your admissions highlight, excuse me. Um, so we are on the Common App. Um, we don't have any supplemental essays, and we read your application holistically. So it's okay if you did not test. We are test optional. Um, if you did, our averages are 28 ACT and 1330 SAT. Um, but those extracurriculars and your grades all throughout high school um, are very important to us as well. We also do consider demonstrated interests, so, so I strongly encourage you to visit our campus, to continue watching the virtual programs we put out on our website, and to interview, which you can do virtually or on campus as well. We offer a slew of merit scholarships, as you see here, including the new Eisenhower Scholarship, worth $40,000 per year. So definitely look on our website, see which ones you qualify for, uh, but most of these you are automatically considered for with your application. Uh, so take an, an eye at these deadlines. We have two early decisions, the first coming up uh, November 15th. Uh, and do make sure you apply for need-based financial aid. We do require the CSS profile. Thank you again. And my name is Maddie Wonder, um, mwonder at gettysburg.edu. I am your, your contact, so please reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next up is St. Joseph's University. All right. Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining all of us this evening. We're very excited to be with you all. Um, my name is Sophia Figas. I'm an admission counselor um, at St. Joseph's University. I've been working at the university for the last three years since I graduated from St. Joe's in 2018 um, and currently in the process of getting my master's. So going to be a double graduate, which is very exciting. Um, I am your counselor. Um, I handle all students and families and work with them from Maryland, DC and Virginia. Um, so if you have any questions after today, please feel free to reach out. My contact information is on this screen here, but we're going to go ahead and get and move forward. So St. Joseph's University is um, a Jesuit Catholic liberal arts institution located just outside of Center City, Philadelphia. The Jesuits, if you are unfamiliar, are an order of Catholic priests whose mission is based in social justice and education to educate the whole person. One of our Jesuit values that at St. Joseph's, I believe our entire uh, campus community, faculty and staff included, but especially our students really do um, connect with is cura personalis, um, which roughly translates to care for the whole person. So we really want students to have, um, you know, as we have a holistic review of your um, admission profile and your admission application as a whole, we really want our students to have a holistic experience at the university as well. Academics important, absolutely. Your future career, absolutely. But we also want students to be able to find themselves as people. Who are you as a student? Who are you as an intellectual? Who are you as a professional? But who are you socially? Who are you in terms of who you are individually, among your friends, um, with your family? Who is it that you want to surround yourself with? And Everything at St. Joseph's University is going to allow you to kind of discover that within your four years. 
So in terms of numbers at the university, we have about 4,100 undergraduate students that are representing 44 states and 35 countries. As a whole, the campus community represents all 50 states and about 43 countries. So we're very excited to have a pretty diverse and inclusive community on our campus. We do have a very strong commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have quite a few affinity groups that our students can get involved in, as well as um, different uh, um, programs and initiatives that our student body has really encouraged within the last few years, which has been absolutely fantastic to see, knowing that I believe, you know, with St. Joseph's University, we are a predominantly white institution, but we really are taking strides to make sure that we are doing the work to meet our mission to be a diverse and inclusive community on campus. In terms of our education and our academics at, at the university, um, our average class size is about 24 students and that breaks down into an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So students have the opportunity to not only connect with one another in within the classroom, but also with their faculty advisors, as well as just their professors in general, because um, you never know who they might know in the field that you're interested in, who they can connect you with, what support are they able to provide you in terms of different resources on campus to make sure you're successful inside and outside of the classroom. In terms of what our students are doing on our St. Joseph's University campus, a St. Joseph's student is super engaged, very, very involved. It's pretty common for students to be involved in two, three, four different things on campus. Um, and so uh, we are a division one school within the Athletic 10 conference and we have about 90 clubs, uh, 90 plus clubs and organizations and every single year students are introducing more and more uh, clubs and organizations as a lot of our of my colleagues have shared tonight that their schools um, allow as well, which is really exciting that we're able to really expand our horizons on our campus communities. In the class of 2020 about 92% of students were employed in graduate school or in full-time volunteer programs just within six months of graduation. And this is a number that we're really proud of, given that obviously this last year due to COVID, it really upended a lot. I know for a lot of students, you know, you weren't able to be involved in some of the things that you typically are involved in or weren't able to do some of the things that you were typically able to do. Um, and a lot of our students really felt that as well, but being that, you know, given that that 92% kind of stayed strong, which is pretty com comparable to past years and a typical year without COVID is really exciting. Um, and I think that's due to the flexibility within our curriculum at the university. So we have our general education program, GEP for short. That's what our core curriculum is. So students are able to take courses that are specific to their major or discipline, but in other subjects as well, theology, philosophy, mathematics, the sciences, the languages. So it really allows students to have um, that flexibility in the classroom, the flexibility within the university as a whole to really find out what their major is, what is it that they want to pursue, especially if you're coming in undecided and you have until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. So, and lots of support through that as well. It's not like you're just kind of thrown into the fire and you have to figure it out. Um, like I said, you will have an academic advisor based on your discipline. You would have um, access to support within the advising centers on campus um, as well as upperclassmen. And that also leads to our 65% of our graduates end up having a double major and or minor combination. So, uh, and that's not to scare students into thinking, oh my gosh, I have to absolutely double major now at this institution. No, just knowing that that's accessible is what's the most important, that if that's something you would like to do, even if you're like, absolutely not, I'm sticking to the one right now, you might change your mind. Even if you have a dead set, this is the major I want right now, the likelihood of you changing your mind at some point within your first couple of years, even in the first semester, is pretty high. Um, so that's just there for you to know that there is a lot of flexibility within our curriculum at the university. We have over 100 majors and minors to choose from that are split across three different schools, our Hobbs School of Business, our College of Arts and Sciences, and School for Health Studies and Education. And you can see there what are some of our popular programs. And also we do have some four plus one master's uh, opportunities as well. And then finally, before I leave you to uh, this evening, we do have um, a holistic review process. Here are our application deadlines, which you can see there. We do have early action, early decision, and regular decision. And then our admission profile, that should say class of 2025, apologies. Um, but that is the updated information that is there for you. So that is correct information for our most recent class. Thank you so much. And if you need anything, I will put my, con my contact information in the chat. Great, thank you so much. At this time, I'd like to ask all of our presenters to join me on with their cameras on. And we have what we like to call here um, a stripe scan kind of round robin question. So I'm gonna pose a question to our wonderful panelists and have them share some of their expertise with you. Um, so starting with Lycoming College, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, um, I think that my advice would be 
Um, at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for you. Um, all of us on the screen, even we have great colleges and universities, um, but you have to make sure you're finding the right fit for you. Um, and I say that uh, as someone who was a college athlete and worked in college athletics, um, especially if you're a student athlete, don't just focus on the athletic part. You need to find that balance with your academic program, the culture of the university, and um, academics. And I say um, the students are the heart of the campus. So if you can get to campus and visit campus and understand that culture, um, that's even better. College. Yeah, I think something that gets forgotten sometimes, a lot of students make a decision without visiting schools. I encourage you to go visit schools. Um, spend a night there if possible. I know with COVID, everything has changed a little bit, but spend a night, check out Eda Dining Hall, you know, check out Gettysburg Dining Hall, say there's the nine Dining Hall. So definitely something that I encourage all of our students to do is go visit um, the campus before making a decision. I hate to see students that make decisions and then not like the place where they end up. So definitely go visit campus before making a decision. Wittenberg University. Yeah, I think it's about fit. So I encourage the visit as well. I also encourage students to be open minded um, all the way through receiving their finance scholarships and financial aid. Uh, don't rule a school out because of the sticker price, um, because uh, the schools on this screen offer a lot of um, merit based aid and additional um, endowed aid, um, endowment um, that our, our wonderful alumni have uh, given to us over the years. So um, for food, I'm going to Dickinson because of farm to table. And I do this of Dickinson College. Yeah, I always recommend that students uh, use their resources. So I feel very confident speaking on behalf of my colleagues on the screen here. We, we love to help students. That's, that's why we do this profession. Um, so, you know, we are obviously more than happy to connect you with current students, with faculty. We want to make sure going back to what everyone's saying about fit, that you are understanding um, your fit with our institution. Um, so yeah, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are happy to make those connections. Gettysburg College. Yeah, so some great uh, suggestions so far um, about visiting campus. If it is Gettysburg, definitely try a, a warm cookie uh, hot from the oven. But um, I would say a, a big thing is balancing uh, what you want in a college and your thoughts uh, with the perspective of the people that are helping you and supporting you through the process too. You want to take advantage of, you know, all those resources and people that you have helping you out, um, you know, because sometimes their two cents matters, sometimes it doesn't. Um, so it is, you know, where you are going to spend the next four years of, of your life. So keep that in mind when you, you know, take the advice of others. St. Joseph's University. I can attest to the warm cookie I've eaten at Gettysburg and it is otherworldly. It's delicious. Um, my biggest piece of advice I would say is, is kind of going off of what Maddie shared, trusting your gut, you know, listen to what it is that you want. This is your process. Um, you are in the driver's seat, mom, dad, parent, guardian, sibling, aunt and uncle, older cousin, they are in the passenger seat and in the back seat. We all know how we feel about backseat drivers. So you can just, you know, have the authority, have the autonomy to say, you know what, this is my decision. And I feel good about it because this came from me. Yes, I had support within that. And that's so, so important. Um, but no, at the end of the day, this, this is your process. So make it that. Well, I agree with everything that you all have said. And I want to first and foremost, thank you for your uh, information, your expertise in this subject area. And I know all of our uh, attendees today appreciated it as well. And thank you for tuning in. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions today. Uh, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. Thank you again and have a great day.